Hey guys, this is the second video in my um, radiation detector series and this will be about the Pripyat RKS 20.03 um, and this is a uh, guess a dosimeter technically and I'll show you why that is. Um, but this one's pretty cool. Um, it's a bit older um, and uh, you can find these on eBay for yeah, 60 to 70 bucks. Some people will charge as much as 100 which I wouldn't recommend buying it. Um, but they're pretty cool units. Um, I really like this one because it actually has two Russian SBM-20 Geiger tubes in it, um, which is really great for uh, beta and gamma sensitivity. The other thing that's kind of um, that you might want to watch out for on this guy is that uh, sometimes the parts on these old things go defective, like the LC diesel stick. Um, this one will occasionally um, have the last digit on, or the first digit on the left stick, uh, which is pretty annoying, but other than that, it's not too bad. Um, to kind of cover the features of this guy, though, um, the controls are actually pretty simple. You have um, sound, so like when the, like if you want to hear the beeps for the particles arriving at the, um, at the uh, Geiger tubes, you can hear them. This button here, when you push it, will show you the battery voltage. Um, this thing takes a single 9-volt battery. On the bottom here, you have the power switch and you have a jack for external DC um, power. And then here, um, when you want to switch between beta and gamma sensitive mode and just gamma sensitive mode, you insert or remove this uh, shield here. With the shield in place, you can see it's got the gamma symbol and it's got a plus showing you where the center of the, uh, of the um, tubes are. Uh, there's but anyway, then it's got this little thumb switch here, which you can use to uh, pull the shield out and put it back in. Um, I'll start with it in gamma mode just for fun. Um, and as you can see here, you have a switch. And this is, and this is Russian for regime, which kind of means mode. Um, when it's on gamma mode, you can either have um, like rates measured in um, microsieverts per hour or micro ronchins per hour and there's two like levels it's so, like this is kind of like the max level here um, so you can have 20 microsieverts per hour or 200 microsieverts per hour or 2 milliroontions per hour or 20 milliroontions per hour and that's in gamma mode in beta mode you can either do um, beta flux density which is measured in particles per centimeter um, every minute. So if you imagine um, this is trying to approximate how many particles, if you had one centimeter squared in the air, this is how many particles are passing through that every minute. And that will actually include beta and gamma. And then here you have, um, and I'm not sure how to use this yet exactly, but this is supposed to tell you how many um, curies per kilogram um, you're getting of activity. And you can see the min and max for those two as well. So the beta flux density, you can either have 2,000 or 20,000, I think. Yeah, 20,000, it's 10 to the third. And then here you've got, mm, I don't know if that's micro or pico curies per kilogram, but, but anyway, um, this I don't screw with too much because I don't know enough about how this works here. Uh, but anyway, enough of that, let's fire this guy up. And you'll have to excuse me because I'm recording one-handed. So we're in gamma, and we're looking for microsieverts per hour. So you can see we've just got one. I'm going to set this guy down and grab a sample. And we'll do this chalice. It's getting some gammas. Um, and I suspect that might be because it's picking up some of the gammas that are emitted when... Uh, um, during the uranium-238 decay chain, um, some of those gammas are a little bit, might be detected um, from the alpha decay. Because usually alpha particles, when uh, in a lot of isotopes, when an alpha decay occurs, a gamma emission will occur. Uh, but depending on energy level, the detectors may or may not pick them up. Since I don't have a gamma response curve or a beta response curve, um, at energy level for this guy. Um, it's kind of hard to determine what that is. Oh, right. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is a Pripyat um, RKS 2003. 
and it says it's a, a radiometer beta gamma is Luchenia, which beta and gamma, you know, like radiation monitoring or measuring unit. Anyway, so I'll pull this sample away and I'll grab my radium watch handle or watch here and we'll watch. So it's telling us we're at, and I'm hovering, trying to hover about a centimeter above it and center the watch on the, between the two tubes. It's telling us we have 0.4 in climbing microsieverts per hour, 0.5. Um, but you kind of get the idea. Um, so I'm going to move that away from me. And we'll start over. I like to power it off before I take another measurement. See that? Ah, there's our sticking digit. That's super annoying. Um, probably have to replace the LCD soon, but, you know, for purposes of this demo, it's okay. I'm going to pause and take this thing out. Okay. Beta shield is off. You can actually see there's a thin plastic layer protecting the tubes from contamination or getting touched. And we'll pop it over to beta mode. And we will do beta flux density. So now I'll power this guy on. And we'll test against this. See the beta flux density climbing. I'm trying to hold this about a centimeter away. I have to kind of estimate. The problem, of course, being that this is going to be counting beta and gamma, so it's going to be kind of hard to count the beta flux density. I suppose what you could do is put the shield on and measure the beta flux density to kind of subtract gamma background and then measure the beta flux density again and subtract the uh, readings with the shield on. Only problem is, is I suspect some um, some of the readings from the shield are going to be bremsstrahlung or maybe high energy betas that aren't blocked properly by it. But anyway, so you kind of get the idea. Um, it's the beta flux density measurement with the shield out. So. The other thing about this too, it's actually pretty heavy. It seems to be like nickel plated something. And then it has a little bit of copper glued on the back as well. Um, and that's also, I think, two block betas. You can kind of see similar shielding behind it, you know, between the tubes. Um, I haven't torn this thing down yet, but I suspect I'll have to in order to fix it. So when I get a new LCD, so we'll go ahead and put this guy back in. But anyway, yeah, this is the uh, Pripyat RKS 20.03 with a sticking number. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty neat little instrument and it's handheld. And it's also in Russian, which is also kind of fun for me. Anyway, thanks guys and uh, we'll see you next video.